Hi, grade two and three. It's Mrs. Powers here. Today I wanted to make a little video for you just to go over further some of the things we've been covering in social studies. And I've got some key points that I wanna talk about in this video, make sure that you all hear them. And then we'll discuss what we're answering next in our paper, okay? So last week we did this sheet together and we talked about different types of resources and whether they are renewable or non-renewable. So things like wind, which one was that? Can you remember? Yes, it's renewable because we anticipate that wind will always be here. It's just a part of nature and we can count on it. Yes, some days and some places are much windier than others, but that's always something that's going to be there. So renewable are things that are always there, they're constantly available, or they can be easily reproduced. That means easily made. So an example off this page of something that can be easily made, not completely easily, not saying farming is easy, but it can be grown. The wheat that we grow in Saskatchewan can be grown each year and we count on that and we can reproduce it again and again for something that we can count on. Uh, some of these are things that we count on for food. Some are for energy and electricity such as the wind and solar power, they can be used and converted into electricity and power for us. Um, same as the oil, coal, those can be, are they renewable or non-renewable? Can you remember? We did an X on them. They're not renewable because they are natural. They come from the earth, but they won't always, always be there. We think they'll still be there for quite a long time into the future. But if we want to think about your grandkids and maybe your grandkids grandkids we don't know if those things will always be available for them especially if our earth keeps on growing if our population keeps growing the way that it is we are using a lot of electricity to live the way we do today we're using a lot of power when we make things in plants and factories so if we keep living the same way and using those resources for energy they will eventually run out um, that's like diamonds too they're found in the earth, but once they're all taken out, there won't be more. They don't grow back and they aren't constantly available like wind or sun. So that's our review about the renewable, non-renewable resources. I wanted to tell you that there's a few natural resources that are very abundant. That means there's a lot here in Saskatchewan. Can you think about which ones they are? Some are on this list. Um, well, let's see, maybe only one is on this list. It's wheat. Yeah, wheat is one of the biggest uh, resources that we produce in Saskatchewan. We're sort of known for that. Um, well, I was just going to say this book, La Land of the Living Skies, or no, L is for Land of the Living Skies. It says that we are known in Saskatchewan as the bread basket of the world. And that's one of our nicknames because we do produce a lot of wheat, which of course can be made into bread. And our wheat can be um, exchanged, traded, sold to other countries and other parts of our country. Another one that we produce in Saskatchewan. Oh, I was wrong. It is on here. It's oil. Uh, so where does oil come from? I wanted to show you guys a page out of here. The book that I was just talking about. And I hope I can find the right page quickly. But oil comes from drilling rigs. Oh, there it is. Always for oil. So have you seen one of those before? You probably have if you've gone on car rides outside of the city, not right outside of Regina, but if you've driven around Saskatchewan, you might have seen those before. It says in Saskatchewan, you'll see drilling rigs from field to field, pumping oil to fuel our cars with the second biggest yields. And I'm going to read a little bit more out of this page for you guys. I used some of these pictures in my other social studies class too. But there's also extra information on the side, which I didn't read to them. But since you're in grade two, three, I'm going to read this part about the oil. Okay. Hundreds of million years ago, even before the dinosaurs, what is now Saskatchewan had a lush tropical sea environment. Can you imagine that? Did you know that from visiting the museum or anything? That we were actually underwater millions and millions of years ago here in Saskatchewan's area. So the microscopic plants and animals eventually became oil which we drill for to we drill today. Oil is important for the energy it provides for this country. We produce about one fifth of all the oil in Canada, making us second to Alberta. 
So you might know that a lot of oil comes from Alberta. Maybe you know someone that lives in Alberta and they work in the oil industry. Well, we are second to them in Saskatchewan with how much we produce. So that's quite a lot. The main oil rigs are situated around Kindersley, Swift Current, and Weyburn Estevan. There are also rich oil sands in the remote north, so up in the very high northern part of our province too. We have another gift left behind when the sea environment of millions of years ago evaporated. And that is potash. So that's good because I was going to come to that as another one of our resources here in Saskatchewan that we are known for, that we make a lot of, and it's potash. So I'm glad it says it on this page too. This mineral was first discovered when they were drilling for oil, and it has made Saskatchewan one of the world's largest producers of, for over 40 years. Some of the most important users of potash use it for glass, soap, and soil fertilizer. So you might have heard of potash, you might not have, but if you've heard of it and wondered what it's for, that is what immediately comes to my mind is that we make a lot of potash here and it's made for using in fertilizer. That's what I knew about it before. But there's other uses too. It could be included in glass, soap, and then the soil fertilizer. Okay, so so far I've mentioned to you guys three of the big resources here in Saskatchewan. Let's say them again. Wheat, oil, and potash. Big words. I should write those down and hold them up for you so you can see how they're spelled. Um, I don't have my whiteboard with me right now, so I'll do that after. But wheat, oil, and potash are big ones. A couple other big ones, timber. And what that means is trees. Now, here in southern Saskatchewan, where we live, there aren't an overabundance of trees. We do have a lot, but we aren't cutting them down for an industry here. Do you know where they are doing that in Saskatchewan? Up north. So if you've ever been to Waska Sioux, um, up in the, or Prince Albert National Park, near there, there are a lot of trees grown and cut down. And they are cut, and they are cut down for good use, for purpose. It's a, an industry of forestry where they grow the trees, they cut them down, they plant more trees. So is that renewable? I'm going to have to ask you guys to leave, okay? Just doing a video. Thanks. It is. It's renewable if it can be planted and grown again. It can be reproduced. So we have timber or forest, trees, wood. That all kind of means the same thing. Um, that's another resource found in Saskatchewan. Excuse me, please. Sorry, that's my kids. That's working from home, hey? Uh, another one is uranium. And there's a place in Saskatchewan called Uranium City. And around that area of Uranium City, there has been a lot of uranium found. So it's another mineral that can be mined. And it is a, a, one of our biggest resources here. So now I said five of them. Let's say them again. Wheat, oil, potash, timber, which means trees, and uranium. Those are five big resources, natural resources that are found here in Saskatchewan. I'll end this video for now, but I'll do another one with some more good information for you as soon as I can. Thanks.